Dr. Elkins is a professor of psychology and neuroscience at Baylor University and the director of the Mind Body Medicine Research Lab, where he conducts research into mind body interventions, including hypnotherapy for the management of hot flashes, sleep disturbances, and smoking cessation. Um, he is an adjunct professor at Texas A&M University College of Medicine and a medical associate with Baylor Scott and White Hillcrest Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Elkins is also the co-developer of the Evia app that provides hypnosis intervention for hot flashes and sleep provided by Mindset Health. Uh, so we work with him very closely. Um, and Dr. Elkins also serves as the editor-in-chief for the International Journal of Clinical and Experimental Hypnosis and has published uh, over 100 times, including five books. So we're very grateful uh, to have you here, Dr. Elkins, and have you presenting on psychological interventions for women experiencing menopause. Well, thank you very much for having me uh, to present uh, the webinar. And uh, the title, Psychological Interventions for Women Experiencing Menopause, uh, I will um, review the available research on a variety of psychological interventions, but of course, uh, focus on the evidence and research, uh, as well as clinical practice in providing hypnotherapy for menopausal uh, symptoms. As Claire mentioned, uh, my research lab at Baylor University is the mind-body medicine research laboratory uh, that is focused on hypnosis research. Um, we're currently conducting a, a, another large randomized clinical trial of hypnotherapy for hot flashes, as well as interventions for improving sleep, as well as uh, hypnotherapy for smoking cessation, and the integration of hypnotherapy and mindfulness-based interventions are some of the areas of focus in my lab. I uh, do have a couple of acknowledgments to make. Um, uh, much of the uh, research on hypnotherapy for hot flashes has been funded by the uh, National Institutes of Health and in particular, the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, as well as um, the National Cancer Institute. Um, but the content is completely mine and does not um, necessarily represent the official views of the National Institutes of Health. And also, as Claire mentioned, a couple of uh, books, which I'll be drawing some of the um, uh, clinical methods and information from that I have an investment in uh, the handbook of medical and psychological hypnosis, as well as uh, introduction to clinical hypnosis. And then I do have a uh, interest in the Evia app, as well as the Finito app, uh, with Evia being the app for uh, hot flashes. Um, and then I am also the uh, editor of the International Journal of Clinical and Experimental Hypnosis. Okay, so just to review the learning objectives um, for the webinar, um, I'll discuss the prevalence and impact of hot flashes um, and share, as we go along, I'll share some information with you about, um, as a clinical health psychologist, how I got interested in research and treatment of hot flashes and menopausal symptoms utilizing hypnotherapy. Uh, I'll also review the existing evidence for uh, psychological interventions in general, including cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness-based interventions, and hypnotherapy. In reviewing the research, it's important to be clear about what do we mean exactly by the term hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Um, these terms having been um, around for a long time, but in research, it's very important that we be very specific about exactly what we mean by the terms that we use, including 
hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Uh, I will then review uh, studies uh, of hypnotherapy for hot flashes. I won't cover them all, um, but um, I'll review the key studies um, leading up to the present. And then um, we'll end with discussing clinical delivery. Um, if you are interested in providing hypnotherapy or um, uh, have patients uh, or using it yourself, uh, how exactly can individuals access hypnotherapy for hot flashes? And then we'll reserve about 15 minutes or so for um, Q&A. So the epidemiology, the prevalence of hot flashes um, most women experience uh, hot flashes during the menopause transition. Um, hot flashes uh, occur either through natural menopause or uh, through treatment, either surgically induced or chemotherapy induced. So during the natural menopause transition, 75 to 80 percent of women experience hot flashes. And then um, primarily women who either for a medical condition or most commonly uh, breast cancer survivors um, uh, may have menopause chemically induced. And this is because uh, breast cancer is a particular type of cancer that sort of feeds off estrogen. And so estrogen doesn't cause breast cancer, but it can increase the growth of breast cancer. So most women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer are placed on a, a medication such as tamoxifen that suppresses the production of estrogen. And so therefore, even if a woman is young, um, if she begins uh, treatment for breast cancer, and then is placed on one of these medications, um, she can almost overnight uh, go into menopause. And so 78 to 72 percent of women uh, who are receiving chemotherapy for breast cancer uh, experience hot flashes. And in breast cancer, they can be particularly severe. So what causes hot flashes exactly? Um, so hot flashes are associated with estrogen decline, uh, and they are understood as representing a dysregulation of core body temperature. And so that implies that the hypothalamus and the brain is involved as the hypothalamus regulates sweating and adjustment to temperature. So when the brain or the hypothalamus perceives heat, then a hot flash is triggered, which results in sweating, which is designed to uh, create coolness, um, just like any time we sweat when our brain perceives heat. Hot flashes that occur at night are referred to as night sweats. Um, hot flashes are associated with anxiety or stress, but they are not caused by stress and they are not caused by anxiety or any psychological factors. So it's important uh, to keep in mind that hot flashes are a physiological symptom and they are not reflective of any psychopathology um, or any uh, psychological cause. So this is what I was referring to as um, the cause of hot flashes um, and the association with the hypothalamus. So if you look at the top of this slide, uh, the thermoregulatory hypothesis is that in women without hot flashes, this thermoregulatory zone is wide, meaning it takes a lot to trigger sweating. All of us sweat if we experience being out in the heat or uh, feel hot, meaning the brain perceives heat, and that triggers sweating. 
In women with hot flashes, that thermoregulatory zone is narrow. And so it doesn't take very much to trigger sweating and uh, the onset of a hot flash. Once a hot flash begins to occur, it cannot be uh, suppressed or um, you can't reduce it. Once it's triggered, then it's going to occur. In studies of hot flashes, hot flashes are uh, measured in one of two ways. Um, most commonly, they are measured through hot flash daily diaries. And in these diaries, women record their hot flashes uh, in terms of the frequency. So it's basically just a diary that can be digital or it can um, just be uh, paper and pencil, but where the woman, if she has a hot flash, she records the number of hot flashes and then um, the hot flashes uh, can be uh, rated in terms of being mild, moderate, severe, or very severe. And this uh, slide just indicates what are the behavioral and physiological markers by which a, a woman might rate her hot flashes as being uh, the severity of the hot flashes that are being experienced. Um, so the impact of hot flashes. So hot flashes can occur very frequently. Um, they occur an average of about seven to 10 years, but they can um, continue on for 20 to 30 years for some women. Um, hot flashes can be very severe, uh, not only in terms of profuse sweating. So some women who are experiencing hot flashes, they may describe the hot flashes as like a, the heat of a burning furnace. It can trigger profuse sweating, uh, resulting in need to change clothes because of the sweating and can cause embarrassment. Most common symptoms associated with hot flashes include sleep disturbances or poor sleep, um, increased cardiovascular risk. Uh, it can impair relationships and sexual health. It can also affect mood, including anxiety, depression, fatigue, and then overall quality of life. Because of this, most women who experience hot flashes are very interested in finding alternatives or ways to manage um, hot flash symptoms. Up until recently, um, the standard treatment for hot flashes has been hormone therapy, specifically estrogen plus progestin. Um, where the uh, interest in alternatives to hormone therapy arise is the Women's Health Initiative study uh, that began in 1997. In that study, uh, about 16,000 postmenopausal women uh, took part. And um, the study evaluated uh, a placebo medication versus women taking estrogen plus progestin. The um, study was halted early, about three years earlier than planned, uh, when it was determined that there were uh, unexpected health risks associated with hormone replacement therapy. So basically, the study revealed that there was an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and an increased risk of breast cancer among women who were taking the estrogen plus uh, progestin. Um, and so there were concerns about long-term use of uh, hormone replacement therapy. Um, and so as you can see in this slide, Basically, the uh, risk benefit, um, the understanding of risk and benefit uh, shifted. And so, uh, although taking uh, estrogen plus progestin 
can have benefits. So it can be a benefit in regard to bone health and uh, decreased risk of colorectal cancer. But on the other hand, it was associated and is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, increased risk of stroke, and then uh, the increased risk of breast cancer. Because of this, many women uh, prefer to not stay on hormone therapy long term, or they may consult with their uh, physician in regard to a lower dose of hormone therapy or um, tapering off of hormone therapy, or in the case of breast cancer survivors, then they, they cannot take um, estrogen plus progestin uh, at all without increasing risk of breast cancer. So as a result of this, there was an increased interest in finding non-hormonal um, treatments for hot flashes. Uh, hormone therapy is very effective. It reduces hot flashes by approximately 75%, but it has the risk as noted above. Um, in evaluating research on uh, alternatives, it's important to keep in mind the difference between statistical significance and clinical significance. So if there's a small reduction in hot flashes, it may not be greatly different than placebo effect, but it could result in showing a statistical difference or change. But for an intervention to achieve clinical significance in reducing hot flashes, it must reduce hot flashes by 50% or a greater amount. Um, as research progressed, um, many different interventions have been examined, non-hormonal interventions have been examined in regard to reduction of hot flashes. These have included a wide range of uh, uh, interventions, including herbs, uh, black cohosh, uh, soy, red clover. Um, none of these things have been shown to be more effective than placebo. A number of studies have investigated antidepressant medications or SSRIs, uh, most notably uh, paroxetine or venlafaxine, Paxil or Effexor. Um, these medications um, do have an impact on hot flashes, but have not been consistently shown to be much more impactful uh, than uh, placebo, and then also carry the risk of side effects. Other medications that have been investigated, um, but eventually abandoned include clonopine, as well as uh, gabapentin. Most recently, uh, uh, fesalinate or um, uh, Vicosa has been uh, investigated and received FDA approval for treatment of hot flashes. Um, in uh, the initial study, over 2,000 women were enrolled, and um, those results did show a statistically um, significant reduction in hot flashes. However, the actual reduction in hot flashes appears to be rather uh, mild. As you can see, uh, the change is somewhere in the range of uh, one or two hot flashes per day reduction in comparison to placebo. In regard to psychological interventions, the two that have had the most research include cognitive behavioral therapy. There have been about 15 studies of cognitive behavior therapy for hot flashes and then mindfulness-based interventions. So I'll just summarize the um, research to date in regard to these interventions. Um, 
cognitive behavior therapy targets the cognitions, the thoughts, um, whether there's catastrophizing or exaggeration in terms of thoughts and beliefs about hot flashes, and then teaches behavioral coping strategies and uh, potentially identifying triggers of hot flashes, uh, teaching stress reduction and those kinds of strategies. Um, however, um, the research to date has not found any evidence that cognitive behavior therapy uh, reduces hot flashes. Uh, six studies did not find any improvement in self-report or physiologically measured hot flashes. Uh, two studies did not measure hot flashes at all. And uh, the remaining seven studies did not find any significant difference from uh, placebo control. What the studies do show is that although cognitive behavior therapy does not reduce hot flashes, it can help women uh, to be less bothered by their hot flashes. Um, and this is a self-report measure of what's called hot flash bother. How bothersome do you find your hot flashes? Somewhat similar results have been shown in regard to mindfulness-based interventions. Um, there has been one extremely well-controlled study uh, that was a randomized clinical trial in which individuals either were randomized to a wait list or um, mindfulness-based stress reduction. Um, the intervention uh, lasted for eight weeks. Um, the uh, mindfulness intervention um, did not reduce hot flashes, but did, similar to cognitive behavior therapy, um, achieve a reduction in uh, hot flash bother. So although neither of these interventions um, have shown any promise in regard to uh, reducing the uh, actual symptoms of hot flashes, um, they have been shown to have some impact on uh, hot flash bothersomeness. And so, as you can see uh, in this uh, study of uh, the mindfulness-based stress reduction, it reduced uh, bothersomeness of hot flashes by about 15%, whereas placebo was around uh, 7%, or uh, was not placebo, rather, weightless control was around 7% uh, improvement. So turning to hypnotherapy, um, when the Women's Health Initiative study uh, came out, uh, this is what really stimulated my interest in hypnotherapy for hot flashes. And I believe that hypnotherapy could be used in such a way to achieve uh, reduction in physiological reduction in hot flashes themselves, not just stress or bothersomeness. Um, the first studies focused on women with hot flashes associated with uh, breast cancer. And this is one of the first studies in which uh, 16 women were um, received a, a five-week hypnotherapy program for hot flashes. So again, as I, I mentioned, it's important to have a clear definition of hot flashes, I mean of hypnosis. And so hypnosis is defined as a state of consciousness involving focused attention, and reduce peripheral awareness, and is characterized by an increased or enhanced capacity for response to suggestion. Uh, this definition is the official definition um, from uh, the American Psychological Association um, Division 30, um, uh, which is a consensus uh, definition of hypnosis uh, from a task force uh, formed by Division 30 of the American Psychological Association. 
And so hypnotherapy is uh, simply the use of hypnosis within therapy or as an intervention. I'll just draw a little bit of attention here to the definition of hypnosis. Um, in some ways, it shares some common ground with other mind-body interventions, such as mindfulness, as both involve a state of consciousness involving uh, focused attention. However, with a hypnotic induction, there is increased suggestion for redu reduced awareness of um, things around the person, more of a focus internally, and then suggestions for an increased capacity for response to suggestion. And the suggestions are generally targeted toward the uh, symptom of interest for change. Um, in the process of hypnotic induction and hypnotherapy for hot flashes, um, the hypnotic uh, sessions include um, direction toward a focus of attention and then suggestions for relaxation or GRO fading, referring to generalized reality orientation fading. Suggestions are then given for deepening this hypnotic state and then mental imagery for coolness and control. This type of mental imagery might include walking down a mountain path, the feeling of cool breeze, snow, other uh, suggestions and mental imagery for experiencing coolness. Post-hypnotic suggestions are given for increased control, and then individuals practice self-hypnosis with audio recordings on a daily basis. So with the EVIA app, individuals receive a um, hypnosis audio recording each day, and they are asked to practice, and, and that is exactly the same approach that we use in um, all of the studies to date uh, that have examined hypnotherapy for treatment of hot flashes. It's a five-week program. Individuals record their hot flashes using daily diaries. And uh, hypnotic induction um, is followed by suggestions directed toward regulation of body temperature, reducing stress, and improving sleep. Um, there can be some individualization of the hypnotic uh, mental imagery that's used, but it's very important that it is integrated with home practice using audio recordings. The physiology, it is believed that the hypnotherapy intervention uh, can impact regulation of core body temperature and that as the uh, individual perceives coolness, hot flashes generally begin to decrease over time, and this thermoneutral zone begins to widen so that over time, uh, with practice of the um, hypnotherapy sessions, um, individuals begin to regulate um, body temperature normally, for some women, we've found that hot flashes can go away altogether. So this is the results from the uh, initial study with the 16 uh, breast cancer survivors. And as you can see, there was uh, almost an immediate decrease in hot flashes with this intervention um, with approximately a 70% reduction in hot flashes. Uh, this led to a second study in which we had a weightless control group uh, and 60 breast cancer survivors with hot flashes were uh, randomized to either weightless control or the uh, hypnosis intervention. Uh, again, the results were pretty consistent with the initial pilot study. Um, weightless control had very minimal decrease in hot flashes. and um, those who received the hypnotherapy intervention 
uh, reduced hot flashes by 70% on average. However, there were questions that still remained. Um, and these included um, uh, that at this point, hypnosis had not been, uh, hypnotherapy had not been compared to an active control, only weightless. And um, hot flashes had only been monitored using these daily diaries or self-report of hot flashes. And although that's the gold standard, really we had not yet determined do hot flashes decrease if they are physiologically measured, not just subjectively uh, reported. And then there was also the question of how big a role does cognitive expectancy or placebo effects play um, in the reduction of hot flashes. So this was a, um, a large randomized clinical trial in which 187 women were randomized to either the five-week hypnotherapy intervention with daily practice of uh, self-hypnosis with audio recordings, or they were randomized to a structured attention control in which they received uh, support, self-monitoring of hot flashes, uh, a matched contact time with a therapist, and so on. Um, individuals did record um, their hot flashes with daily diaries. Um, we also utilized an ambulatory skin conductance uh, monitor uh, to objectively measure hot flashes. And then secondary outcomes included measures of hot flash bothersomeness. We used the hot flash related daily interference scale and then to evaluate sleep, the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index was utilized. Um, this is a picture of the uh, hot flash monitor. Um, it's uh, called a biolog, and um, it basically uh, measures skin conductance in that when women experience a hot flash, it triggers sweating. And so a skin conductance monitor can uh, accurately uh, determine when a hot flash occurs. Um, uh, the device is about the size of a iPhone. Uh, the woman can carry it in her pocket or in a pouch that's provided, and then the electrodes go across the chest or the sternum. Uh, so this is just a, a flow diagram of the study. Um, after individuals uh, completed informed consent, they completed all baseline measures, including um, uh, wearing the biolog uh, skin conductance monitor, completing hot flash daily diaries for a week, and then they were randomized. Um, uh, Half the women received hypnosis intervention and the other half met with weekly with a therapist and uh, received all the same information. Um, they received audio recordings of information about hot flashes. We measured cognitive expectancy before and after the first session. And then women were followed for a total of three months. Okay, so uh, to dive into the results. Uh, as you can see in this slide, the, the, um, the uh, solid line represents the structured attention control group. And um, these individuals, um, it, it was interesting, we, uh, completed some post-intervention interviews, and a lot of the women thought they were uh, receiving the hypnotherapy intervention. Um, a lot of them guessed that they were not, um, but they met weekly with a therapist. They um, wore the hot flash 
monitor the same amount of time and kept daily diaries. There was about a 15 to 20% reduction in hot flashes just through structured attention and meeting with a supportive therapist. The uh, dotted line you can see was consistent with our previous studies. Um, and a couple of things to notice about this, the reduction in hot flashes was almost immediate after the first session. Um, by week three or week four, uh, hot flashes had decreased within the range of over 50% to 60 to 70%. At the end of intervention, uh, at week after week five, hot flashes had decreased by 70%. And then we followed women for uh, to week 12. Interestingly, at the long-term follow-up for those receiving hypnotherapy, um, hot flashes had decreased by 80%. And so this really kind of suggests that continued practice of the hypnotherapy sessions or the audio recordings is very important um, and could lead to even greater reduction in frequency and severity of hot flashes. Uh, this slide compares the uh, physiologically measured hot flashes. And so in the um, uh, upper left-hand corner, you can see the free uh, mean number of um, hot flashes as reported through daily diaries for both the uh, structured attention control and for the um, uh, hypnotherapy intervention. This graph looks different because uh, the electrodes from the uh, monitor, they're they can irritate the skin. And so women would only wear the uh, hot flash monitor um, during the baseline week at the end of treatment and then at the 12 week follow up. And so if you look at the um, uh, graph immediately uh, to the right, you can see the um, physiologically monitored hot flashes and that these pretty much mirrored what we were seeing from uh, self-report. Um, and so this was the um, first study uh, to uh, measure hot flashes physiologically. And it very conventionally uh, demonstrates that the hypnotherapy program and intervention uh, does reduce hot flashes to a clinically significant degree whether you measure them through self-report diaries or if you use physiological monitoring. Um, this slide is a summary of all of the results. Um, it's possible to calculate a hot flash score uh, that combines frequency plus severity, which uh, significantly decreased. This shows that the um, hot flash bothersomeness also significantly decreased. And based on the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, sleep improved by about 50% on average. Um, Claire, I do not think we'll have time to show the video. So uh, we'll just uh, skip over the video so that I'll have time to to get to the additional uh, findings and results. Um, we uh, conducted focus groups and conducted interviews with uh, women who uh, underwent the uh, program just to get uh, give women a voice to their own experience uh, of going through the hypnotherapy intervention. Um, one question that sometimes comes up is does hypnotizability moderate the reduction of hot flashes with hypnotherapy in other words 
um, does hypnotizability matter? Does it just work for people who are highly hypnotizable or does it work for everyone? And so our research was able to answer that question um, pretty clearly. This slide just simply shows um, that hypnotizability is a general trait um, that can be uh, accurately measured through hypnotizability scales. And it is a trait that is normally distributed with uh, some people being a minority of people being in the lower range about 10 to 15 percent, and then about 10 to 15 percent in the higher, very high range. So these are the results in regard to hypnotizability from the study that I just cited. So we examined individuals, whether they were in the low range, that would be the blue line, um, moderate is the red line, high, green, and then very high hypnotizable in the, uh, the purple line. What you can see here is that all women, regardless of their um, hypnotizability score, experience significant decreases in hot flashes. In fact, women achieved a clinically significant reduction in hot flashes, regardless of whether they were in the low, mid, high, or very high range of hypnotizability. What we did find is that people who were in the higher range, they got there faster with fewer sessions. But it really just kind of makes the point that a hypnotherapy intervention is effective for everyone. Um, some women may need to practice more frequently or persist with the program longer to achieve the same results. Um, those who were in the very high range uh, at every time point, they had a, a, a faster response to uh, the hypnotherapy intervention. So very strong evidence for support for hypnotherapy as being the only psychological intervention that actually reduces hot flashes. And studies consistently show hypnotherapy reduces hot flashes by 70% and improves sleep. Um, hypnotherapy can reduce hot flashes for all women, regardless of hypnotizability. However, I would say the biggest barrier has been that hypnotherapy has not been widely available. Um, few healthcare providers are even aware of the efficacy. And this has been a barrier to um, women having access to um, hypnotherapy for hot flashes. I'm very excited to be involved with the EVIA app, um, which has the goal of making the hypnotherapy program widely available uh, and easily accessible to practice from home or wherever the woman might be. So I'll just uh, share some um, of the uh, research findings from the EVIA app uh, that have just been completed. So these are uh, the latest findings in, in regard to this area of research. Um, the EVIA app provides self-directed um, hypnosis for uh, menopausal symptoms. Um, it involves the um, structured five-week program. Uh, the daily hypnotherapy, um, hypnotic inductions and program is specifically targeted toward menopausal symptoms and hot flashes and uh, can improve sleep as well. Um, it provides a way for women to track their symptoms and record their frequency of hot flashes and provides uh, important psychoeducational information about the physiology and the psychology of hot flashes and menopausal symptoms. 
Our early research um, that just came out uh, is with a sample of 428 women um, with three or more hot flashes uh, per day who use the EBA app. Um, the age range uh, was 30 to 77 years. Um, the average age for onset of hot flashes uh, that is not chemically induced or breast cancer survivors, just natural menopause is about age 52. And that's what we found in this uh, initial study. At baseline, the average number of daily hot flashes was about seven hot flashes uh, per day. Uh, here you can see the uh, distribution of whether the women were menopausal, postmenopausal, um, or uh, perimenopausal. And so kind of a distribution as women begin to experience uh, hot flashes during the uh, perimenopausal phase. Um, most of the women were not taking hormone therapy. And it isn't that they couldn't. Um, I would say that if the woman in consultation with her physician were to be on a low dose of hormone therapy and then uh, interested in tapering off of the hormone therapy, or if um, uh, the woman just wants to, in this case, most women did not want to take hormone therapy, and so most were not using it. Um, some of the concerns of EBA users uh, that can inform about hypnotherapy, um, uh, about 36% of users identified a non-hormonal tool to manage hot flashes as extremely important. Uh, however, the majority, 55%, had never heard of hypnotherapy for hot flashes before beginning the EBA program. Um, and even fewer had ever used hypnotherapy for any purpose. Hot flash severity at baseline uh, was uh, distributed with um, most women experiencing moderate um, to severe uh, hot flashes. Um, as I mentioned, hot flashes can last a long time. Most of the women who were using the EBA app had, hot, had had hot flashes between one to five years. Okay, so the results um, were pretty consistent with what we have found in previous studies. 70% um, of um, the women using the EBA app achieved a clinically significant reduction in in their hot flashes um, and um, with clinical significance being defined as 50% or greater reduction in hot flashes from baseline. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure Claire could say more about this. Um, however, the um, EBA app is easy to access for providers as well as users. Uh, scanning the code will get you into uh, creating an EVIA account. Um, and just to summarize, the EVIA app of hypnotherapy for hot flashes, uh, our research to date has shown 70% uh, achieve a clinically significant reduction in hot flashes. Um, and the code will take you to uh, uh, patient fact sheet, as well as clinician resources, and um, and so on. And so currently in my practice, if I'm treating women with hot flashes, I generally direct them toward the EVIA app. And then the individual sessions uh, with myself for hypnotherapy uh, are to help the woman maintain compliance utilize the audio recordings on a daily basis, and then to uh, address any uh, related issues that uh, may come up 
including stress management. So I guess we're at question and answer time. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was that was really excellent. Um, I I really enjoyed that talk and we have lots of questions to get to. Um, we also, if it's okay with you, Dr. Elkins, um, there was that video that you know, time, if, if had there been time, we could have shown, but we could possibly send it out with the recording and but we can send it out so everyone can watch it after the fact as well. Um, I'll jump right into some questions that have been submitted. Um, the first question was early on in your talk, and um, it is, how do we differentiate between the impact of hot flashes versus the impact of menopause more generally? So um, that's a great question. So the first thing is, uh, in thinking about menopause in general, hot flashes and sleep disturbances are the um, most common um, complaint or symptoms associated with menopause that lead to uh, disturbance. Uh, the, the menopause symptoms and the hot flashes, they sort of have a cascading effect on interpersonal relationships and sexuality. So for example, what we found is that some women avoided uh, sexual intimacy because just the closeness to the other person would trigger a hot flash. Um, and so it, it leads to anxiety. It's associated with depression. Even um, cognitive complaints have been associated with hot flashes. And so I, I think we can sort of make that distinction where hypnotherapy and hot flashes and menopausal symptoms may diverge is in regard to some of the um, symptoms that occur with the um, reduction in estrogen. So other complaints that hypnotherapy does not address would be such things as vaginal dryness or um, maintaining bone health. And so um, if those are concerns, and again, it's very helpful, even if the woman is using the EBIA app, um, to have individual sessions with a therapist. So there are a number of lubricants and other non-hormonal support for sexual health, and then a number of medications, um, uh, including good calcium intake vitamin D, and then uh, weight-bearing exercise are also interventions that can help maintain uh, bone health as well as medication. So even if the woman is using the EV app, she really should have a good consultation with her physician in regard to these other menopausal symptoms, not just hot flashes. It kind of leads into the next question. Um, have you looked at other menopause related symptoms um, and whether or not hypnotherapy has an, has an effect on other symptoms like anxiety, depression, um, or some of the other symptoms that are related to menopause? So um, we have. Um, I didn't cite it in these slides, um, but in almost all of the studies that I cited, we also measured anxiety. Um, through either uh, the hospital anxiety and depression scale, the epidemiologic um, studies, um, depression scale, um, or um, other measures of depression and anxiety. I'll just say it that way. Uh, in each case, even though the intervention was not specifically targeted toward anxiety or depression, or sexual health, um, all of these markers improve. So there was approximately a 50 to 60% uh, reduction in anxiety. Um, depression was, a reduction was in the range of 30 to 40%. And we also found uh, a, interestingly, a uh, 
significant improvement in um, sexual functioning for women who maintain the uh, daily use of the hypnotherapy program. That's very interesting. Um, and I know that in the Evia app, um, we also look at the hot flash, um, the daily interference. Can you talk a little bit about how you not only just look at the uh, frequency and severity, but also the daily interference as well? Yeah, so um, the interference of hot flashes um, it can relate to the severity of the hot flashes as well as the frequency and then how it impacts the individual um, woman's life. And so we use the hot flash related daily interference scale because it measures about eight different domains in addition to overall quality of life. And this includes the degree to which hot flashes impact the individual's mood, their sense of well-being, sleep, um, work, interpersonal family relationships, and so on. And so we can get an overall score, but we can sort of bore down to examine the degree to which hot flashes impact each of these different um, domains. Among the most impactful is just sleep is, I would say, probably number one. And if you think about it, poor sleep, it affects depression, anxiety, irritability, uh, relationships. And so these different factors, they're sort of in interrelated. Um, our research has generally shown that the hypnotherapy um, intervention has a large impact on um, interference, daily interference or bothersomeness of any remaining hot flashes. But as I mentioned, in, in, some, in these studies, I mentioned like so a 70% reduction, but some for some women, hot flashes uh, went away all, altogether or were reduced down to like one or two hot flashes. And so it really demonstrates the hypnotherapy intervention in regard to reducing hot flashes and interference. It's on about the same level as hormone therapy, um, which I personally find amazing and very impressive. I agree. Um, we're right sort of at time, but I have a couple more questions. If that's okay, we might go over a couple minutes. Sure. Um, so the next question um, is around mechanism. Have you studied or has there been any studies that look, have looked at the mechanism of how hypnotherapy works in general or how specifically hypnotherapy for hot flashes works? So let me say first, that's a great question. That That is a a pressing question that uh, we need better answered. What I can tell you about it uh, that we have examined to this point, um, in the study that I mentioned, the last study that I reviewed in regard to the large randomized clinical trial, we wanted to find out if the mechanism might be cognitive expectancy or placebo effect. And so in a follow-up study, we examined whether change in cognitive expectancy mediated or was the underlying factor accounting for the hypnotherapy program's impact on hot flashes. What we found was that there was no mediation effect of cognitive expectancy. So that pretty much showed that these results are not due to placebo effects. It also demonstrated that whether a woman believes in hypnotherapy, has done hypnotherapy before, or doesn't believe it will be effective, it didn't really matter. What mattered was compliance. So whether you think it will help or you don't, 
just do it. Uh, the uh, metaphor that I sometimes use is hypnotherapy for hot flashes is like medication. If you don't take it, it can't help you. And so a dose of hypnotherapy every day results in these benefits. The other thing that we examined, we thought, well, maybe it's stress, maybe stress reduction. And in the study, we measured stress through both self-report, but also saliva cortisol. Again, in the secondary analysis, we found no mediation effect um, that could be accounted for by stress or saliva cortisol. The study, the reason I said is such a great question, hot flashes themselves are not totally understood. They are related to estrogen, but they are not caused by the decline in estrogen. In other words, even though estrogen levels remain low, most women eventually stop having hot flashes after 10, 15, 20 years. And so what we really believe is going on is that the hypnotherapy intervention has an impact on the hypothalamus and regulation of core body temperature. Uh, it's possible to measure core body temperature, but the study that is yet to be done is an fMRI study um, where we could really examine um, what's happening in brain structures and particularly the hypothalamus during hypnotherapy sessions. A couple more questions. Um, question that was submitted outside of the app, are there any studies done in perimenopausal women? Um, the large randomized control trial that you cited was done in postmenopausal women. Can you speak a little bit to that? I didn't hear the very first part of your question. So, um, outside of the EVIA app, have there been any studies done looking specifically in perimenopausal women? Um, there have not been. Um, and, and the reason is, is that in these well-controlled clinical trials, if the woman is in the perimenopausal phase, then they still have some estrogen. So um, you wouldn't know for sure, you know, is the change in hot flashes due to them being in perimenopause phase, or is it uh, due to the intervention itself? And so in these studies that I cited uh, with menopausal women, to be in the study, the woman has to have not had a menstrual cycle for at least one year so that it's absolutely confirmed that they are in the postmenopausal phase. However, if you just think about it rationally or with a rationale, most women begin to experience hot flashes during the perimenopausal phase. That's where they're concerned about them. And so if you come down to like clinical use, it really shouldn't matter. Uh, there's no reason to think that the hypnotherapy intervention would be any less effective during the perimenopausal phase rather than postmenopausal. In fact, that's really where it empowers women to have more of a choice that they can find out, well, can I manage my symptoms with the hypnotherapy program? Um, do I need to look at some other alternatives? Um, and so I would say that's really the ideal phase where management of hot flashes really should begin. In, in, the, in that large women's health initiative study, um, one of the things that I believe came from that study is it's probably most risky if a woman is completely in 
postmenopause and having hot flashes and then to go on hormone therapy is probably within the riskier range, especially if there's a family history of breast cancer or heart disease. Okay, last question we'll get to. Um, if women stop using the EVIA app or stop using uh, hypnotherapy, does the effect wane at all? Great question. Um, in the video uh, that we didn't get to show, but I, I know that it'll be made available, um, the individual did that. So she, uh, she describes her experience in which she um, is using the uh, hypnotherapy program on a daily basis. Her hot flashes went away. And she thought, this is great. I don't have hot flashes anymore. And so she quit doing it. The hot flashes came back. And so she got back on the program. So again, it's that metaphor of being like medication. If you took medication for blood pressure and your blood pressure went down and you thought, oh, this is great. I won't take the medicine anymore, it comes back. What we found is that most women can eventually taper off if they choose to the hypnotherapy sessions or use it less frequently but it should be a slow taper it shouldn't be okay my hot flashes are almost gone i'll just quit doing it um what we found is that most women actually continue to do it because they might use it to help with their sleep or other things and so those audio recordings um they're very useful for other other purposes, but um, but directly answer the question: If you're if the woman is in that first one year two year window, no, you really if you stop doing it, hot flashes are very likely to uh, to come back. Awesome! Thank you so much. Um, there's a couple questions that were submitted about. Um, the specifically the app and upcoming updates and pricing. And I will respond to those via email just because we're out of time. Um, but other than that, I think we got to most of the questions. Um, and certainly we could keep going all day because it's fascinating, but um, we'll, we'll end it here. Thank you so much, Dr. Elkins. This was really fascinating and, um, you know, hearing your research and, and from, from the first person is always wonderful. Um, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.